Hey guys, welcome to day two of this rotary road trip. We're in the classic 1985 Mazda RX-7 with the 12A rotary engine. And we just spent the night here in St. George, Utah on our way to Los Angeles. It's about 900 miles or so. It's a long way. It's a long way, isn't it, Tommy? Tommy's behind the camera. And the plan is to do a road trip this is kind of a love letter for all you Mazda fans because we're going to go to actually Mazda headquarters in outside of LA and do a tour of their heritage collection tomorrow. But today we have to go do part two of this classic road trip. And uh, Tommy, we're in Utah. You know what the speed limit is here. So Utah, um, unlike Colorado, at least as far as I know, we've actually had some 80 mile an hour speed limits. But right here, it is 70 miles an hour, so hopefully it'll open it up once we get through uh, St. George a little bit. Yeah. But let's talk about what this car is like to road trip in. Um, first off, there's this kind of misconception that these RX-7s are true hardcore sports cars that are bred for the track, but in reality, they're pretty squishy stock. They've got nice soft suspension and high profile tires and big comfortable bucket seats. Why don't you show the interior? Um, and it's proven to be a, a super comfortable drive thus far. Uh, we've had a, a good radio, we've been using our tape player adapter which you plug into the tape player and then you can play music via this aux cord on the other end, here it is. Um, we also have fully working air conditioning and heat, we haven't had to use the AC yet because it's been quite cold, um, and cruise control, right? Yeah, the cruise control works like a charm. Uh, this car only has, let's see, 52,000 miles on it, it is completely original, let me show you that. Original and uh, what's really cool about it is it's like being in a time capsule. I feel like you know I, I should have big hair and shoulder pads from the 80s, and it was one of the last made, I think, of this first generation RX-7. Obviously, uh, the RX-7 has become a cult classic because of the rotary engine, uh, and the one that is really sought after is the twin turbo. Uh, but this is the first one. This is the 12A, the original. The FB. Yeah, the FB. And um, it really does just hum, you know. Um, we're in fifth gear. I'm doing 70 miles an hour. And the engine is rotating at almost 4,000 RPM. And think about what that would sound like in a V8, right? I mean, if you were in a 4,000 RPM in a V8, the truck or car would be going... Arr! And this, just humming right along. Is yeah, these engines were super rev happy and, and they would like to go high too, rev really high. Yeah, the uh, red light is 7,000 and this one revs up to 8,000. Well, it actually revs to 7,000. The attack goes to 8, but the warning buzzer comes on at 7. So it will go to 8, but it won't be good for it. I don't know. I don't think it will go to 8. I think you're supposed to shift right at 7 because there's this little buzzer that comes on. Yeah. This e when you hit 7,000 RPM, that's when you know it's you gotta shift. Yeah, we can show them that, but it's an old car. We uh, don't want to damage it. Uh, the goal is to sell this car once we're done with it in LA. So if you guys are interested, there's a link to the uh, Craigslist ad in the description of this video, and it, it could be someone's lucky car. I'm hoping potentially to sell it to the guys at the Mazda Museum because it's so clean uh, and it's so original. Uh, maybe they'll want it. And, we can share it with the rest of the world. Or, if there's somebody out there who really appreciates these old rotaries, this car could be yours. Now, the one thing about driving this car that's really unique is it doesn't have power steering. Uh, this is the GS model, so it's, there's, a, there's a base model, a middle model, and then the GSL. This is the middle model. Well, and the GSL SE, too. Yeah, GSL SE had the bigger engine with um, fuel yep. injection. Yep. We don't have leather seats, we don't have the sunroof, and we don't have... Um, this brakes on the back of the car. We have ro uh, drum, brakes. drum brakes in the back, but it, I don't really miss it. It's so light and so nimble. And you know, nowadays modern cars have electronic steering, uh, and this is what steering should be like. I can feel exactly what the front wheels are doing. I can feel the curvature of the road. It's just such a happy little car. It's a little small for a guy my size. Now I owned this car when I was high school was my first new car and if you look at me I'm obviously a little cramped in here but outside of that once you get used to the fact that everything is like undersized it's a great little car and uh, I just took it up to uh, 75 going down the hill and look that steering wheel does not much look at that nothing 
it's perfectly it's perfectly still try to find a used car with that every used car we ever bought the thing shakes and shadows and shimmies like elvis on uh peanut peanut butter and bananas um you know in terms of loudness we do have some worn seals here they're a little bit a little bit drafty but not too bad at all um we've been staying nice and warm and it's 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 been quiet enough where we can listen to a book on tape no problem yeah and show how much room we have in the back it's actually surprisingly big back there we've got all of our stuff back there big duffel bag a couple smaller bags coats um, and it all fits perfect uh oh oh speed limit just opened up tommy i'm doing 80 miles an hour it's legal here look at that no problem whatsoever 80 miles an hour in the little rx7 it's just doing great well guys this has been another road trip update uh, on our way down to las vegas and we shall see you guys uh on the next one thanks for watching remember check out tflcar.com for what tommy more news views and real world reviews all right see you guys next time ciao